this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore and today I'm sharing a it's like a gift box it's super it's really a good size it's three and a half by three and a half by three and a half plus this top part but um, I'm using our new graceful glass designer vellum and I did these all different colors on purpose but I think it turned out really cute you can do them all the same same color. I'm going to do the next one all the same because I wanted to just show you a variation. But I love, love this designer series paper. I showed this in my haul. So this is the designer series paper. And you can use anything on this. You can use your watercolor pencils. You can use your blends. You can use your stamp and write markers. On this one, I use the blends. And it does give some really bright, vibrant colors to it. Um, and one thing about this, the other one that I'm going to show you, I'm using the Stampin' Right markers on. I already colored them. I've done this video one other time, and I got like halfway through, and um, I had the box, the measurements wrong. <laughs> so I had to start over again but these are the ones that we're using and I actually colored three of them all the way and then three and a half so I had this one like half colored and um, I just showed how to use the Stampin' Write markers but they're so simple it's just like coloring in a coloring book so I really didn't need to show it but I'm using these all four the same on this next box so um, this is one of the patterns and I think you get two sheets of each I have this sheet and then that's the other sheet for that but look how gorgeous this is and one sides a little bit raised and I did color on this side you can color on the back side um, if you want it a little bit muted I think it'd look a little muted I haven't tried it yet but I just did it on the front because I thought it was so pretty on the front so it has two of all these designs but look how gorgeous these are I mean it's so pretty look at these and then there where's the birds I have to show you the birds because the birds are super look at these birds look how gorgeous so it is so beautiful I love this paper I have so many ideas for this and it's not actually paper it's vellum and it's a really good thickness on the vellum so it doesn't warp or anything when you color it so you could probably even use your stamp, uh, stampin' pads and then um, use a watercolor pen. I haven't tried that, but you can use a blends or your watercolor um, little aqua painter. I, I haven't tried it. I don't know if it'll like um, uh, bulk out with it. It probably will a little bit because it's water on it. But anyway, there's so many ways that you can use it. So anyway, that's what I'm using for this vellum. And I made the box white on purpose because it really stands out up against a white surface. So I really wanted to make it white. And besides, I wanted these to be like the main um, spotlight on these. But the box is really a good size. So this is what I'm sharing today. And I'm going to just set that one aside. And what you're going to need for this is you're going to need the thick Whisper White. This is best for boxes. Um, it's really thick and it's really um, perfect for box making. So these are um, 7 by 9.5. Both pieces are seven by nine and a half. I have to use two pieces because the box is that big. You'll need a piece of scrap um, basic black and some scrap whisper white for the sentiment. And I'm also, the stamp set I'm using is the Botanical Bliss. This is a beautiful stamp set. So I'm using the especially for you, but you can use whatever um, you have the happy birthday or best wishes you can use whatever you like on it it's really pretty stamp set so that is what I'm using I'm also using some of our 3 8 inch black uh, basic black satin ribbon and then I'm also using for to cut out the little sentiment I'm also using this stitched labels and you've seen me use this one before and again I'm using this little round one right here and then I'm going to use from the layering circles the scallop 
and let's see this scallop is two and a half inches so those are the two we're gonna cut use to cut out our label alright so let's get started scoring this may be a little bit longer because the box is a little bit more involved I'm gonna see if I can bring you out a little bit alright so that looks good so let's go ahead and score these we're gonna score them both the same way so this is the nine and a half inch side here so on the nine and a half we're gonna score it at three and a quarter and six and a half and then we're going to turn it and we're going to score it at one half and three and a quarter or three and three quarters sorry three and three quarters I'll mark all these again on my project sheet that's on my blog alright so we are going to then again do the exact same thing on this one so we're going to do this side one half and three and three quarters And then this side is going to be three and a quarter and six and a half. All right, so that is it. We are going to first cut these. So on this little narrow part right here, we're going to cut this side off. You can do this on the trimmer if you don't have um, scissors big enough or if you don't can't cut straight. So that is going to be our glue tab here. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side, on this one. So we have two pieces that look the same. Now we are going to cut up this one. And we're also cutting up this side. So we're going to do it on both of them. And then this side. Alright, so you have two different lengths. This side is three and a quarter. This side is three inches. Okay, so the three and a quarter is going to be the bottom of our box. So I got to make sure I have both of these right. That's the three inch side. Okay, so they are going to go together like this. And what we have to do one more score mark. So on the three inch side, we are going to score every other one. So I'm just going to lay it down like this and I'm going to just mark here a little X there and a little X here. So we're going to score this one and we're going to score this one. And we're going to score these at one and five eighths. So let's bring that up. You can do this after you have it together too if it's easier. So we're going to do it at one and five eighths. So we're just scoring the, the first one, not the second one. So you don't want to score this one. And we're going to do the same thing on here. so we have these score this is just the top of our box okay now we are going to put it together and I'm going to put it together just like I where I marked it so we have it all ready so what I probably need to do first is sharpen these score marks because this is really thick cardstock, and I want to be sure it's scored really well. Now we are going to add our adhesive. And 
And it's easier for me to do it this way because I want to line up and make sure all my score marks are all running the same. Okay, so if it's easier for you to score the 1 and 5 eighths when this is together, you could do it that way. That's how I originally did it, but I thought, oh, this time I'll just mark the little X and we'll be done with it. So now we just need to adhere this part. So I'm going to put adhesive again here. And I'm going to just line this up to here. Like that. And so this is the bottom. Let's see which is my front. This is going to be the front. So I'm going to use, be sure to use tear and tape or fast fuse, especially on a box this size. Okay, so that's the bottom. And these are going to fold in. And then these are going to fold and meet here. We're going to round the corners of these with our corner rounder here. This is our triple. Um, I can't remember. It's a new one. And I will put it on there. So we're going to do that one. And then we're going to do these two. So for those of you who have been wanting another corner rounder, that is it. We are going to, I'm going to grab my eraser real quick and erase the little X that I put on there. We are going to hold these together. Actually, I'm going to, I'm punching one at a time. That's what I did before and it came out perfect. So let's just center this. And then I just used my pencil, put these back together so they're even, and then I just traced this around and then just punched that one. So these will line up just right. All right, so I'm going to tie the bow around here first because. I don't want this just flopping around. So I already cut a piece and this is like 15 inches. I'm just going to tie the bow on it. This way we have that not flopping around and stuff. Let's see if I can do this on camera like I know I have been doing. Yay. Okay, and then I'm going to just, you don't really need the whole 15, I guess. Maybe 14. All right, so there's the bow. And then we're ready to adhere our little vellum pieces. So what I did for this one is I just stuck glue dots on each corner. And then one right in the middle and you can't see it you can't see them through here and it's colored so so let's center this on here and then I'll go ahead and speed up the video while I do the other ones you don't have to watch me do all all of them Okay, so I have them all on here. Now the only thing I wanted to point out on these is that if you use the Stampin' Write markers, be careful because they don't dry as fast as like the blends. Like these are all the blends. And you can see that this bled a little bit. So my finger would get in the red and then it would kind of bleed onto the pink. 
but I mean it still looks pretty it's it's not a big issue but just be careful and work from the inside out um, I found that later like on my very last two that I did that it was smarter to do it that way but on the blends you don't have to worry about that they dry really quickly so you can see how beautiful the blends look I love the blends with this all right so this is just showing you look how cute it is with all the same pattern too it looks really cute all right so let's set that aside and I'm going to stamp our sentiment So the sentiment is, especially for you, and I'm going to use Memento Black. And I'm going to bring up the big shot and we are going to cut our pieces out here. So I'm going to use the magnetic platform. We're going to do them both at the same time. So I'm going to cut that one out with this little... And then we're just going to do... So they especially for you just fits. You can use one of the other ones from the stamp set too. They're, I think they'd all would fit in here. Especially for you is like the longest one. You have to be really careful with this um, pushing this one out because the edges are really delicate. So there is our two pieces we need. I'll bring this one back in here. I'm just going to attach it using some snail. Looks really pretty on the scallop. I'm going to use our little one in, in eighth inch and I'm going to punch a hole in here. I'm going to use some black baker's twine and we're going to attach it with to the ribbon. In the front here. I may need my little tweezers if I going to tie a knot in this. All right, so there it is. There you have it. I love, I love that, that the little circle sentiment on here. I'm going to need to arrange my bow so it stays like my other one did. All right, so that's it. So it's a really, really fun project to do. It does take a little bit of time to color them, but I think it took me to do all of these maybe 10 minutes. I mean, especially with the Stampin' um, blends, because the blends dry really fast. I had to be a little bit more careful with the Stampin' Write Markers, because they do um, tend to stay wet longer. And you have to make sure they dry before you put them on your box. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you need any supplies, you can go to my blog at stampingwithamore.com and shop from my blog. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the little bell to get notifications each time I upload a new video. Thanks, everyone. I hope you have a blessed day, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye.